Hello, and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be reviewing John michel Jarre's classic record, Ox G. Recorded and released in 1976 in France, and distributed by Polydor Records, now a subsidiary of Universal, because every song in existence has to be owned by three companies. Goddamn capitalism. Um, anyways, on to the album. The back of the record reveals all the different instruments used on the recording. A vast array of synthesizers, drum machines, sequencers, and computers, many of which are groundbreaking at the time. Keep in mind, this was published in 1976, six years before MIDI was first released. That means it was harder for musicians, such as one rugged looking jar, to sync and compose with their electronic instruments. To me, records from this time, which are completely synthesized, stand out for me for not only its groundbreaking nature, but the determination of the musicians involved. Many of which, including Jar, faced scrutiny for not obeying the standards of real music, which at the time was considered to be a stereotypical rock and roll. As far as I'm concerned, real music doesn't exist. All music is music, whether it be radio-friendly crap, avant-garde, or just straight-up noise. Now, Oxygen is as much of an album as it is an experience. Each track is simply titled after the album separated by parentheses, which shows which part of the piece it is. So far, Jar has released 20 parts to the Oxygen Trilogy, the last seven of which are in 2016's Oxygen 3. I consider all of Oxygen to be one long 40-year adventure, a trip through space, time, and technology which binds them together. Now I will be only focusing on the first six parts of Oxygen which are on this album, the first three on side A and the last three on side B. The first part it's the exposition of the adventure, leaving Earth and traveling through the cosmos, accompanied by lush pad synthesizers and an almost theremin-like sound. The track transitions beautifully from lush pads into the second parts, magically ethereal arpeggios, glimmering like stars, and synth stabs and drum hits flying like asteroids and comets. The third part, the conclusion to side A, sounds like your descent upon a new alien planet which is the conclusion of your voyage and your future destination, preparing to set foot on a new landscape as a dramatic, slow-sounding synths and a benevolent drum kick leads you towards this mysterious new place. Oxygen Part 4 is Jar's most iconic track. From the indistinguishable drum sounds of the cork money pops to the tape hiss, which sounds like an ocean tide. The trippy aesthetics of the music video, along with the robust amount of gear, through the absolute synth wizardry Jar presents to the listener. Going back to space analogy, part four feels like the first impressions of an alien planet, gazing at the people and animals you've never seen before, an almost like a childlike state of wonder. This feeling transitions perfectly into the fifth part, the longest installment of the piece in this record, clocking in at over 10 minutes. It starts off with a heavy chorus effect and a repetitive synth step, eventually transitioning into glimmering process synth lead and mini pop drum sounds. This part of the album feels like you're trying to communicate with the people on the new planet. However, the rest of your crew aren't allowing you as this would deviate from the mission. This track continues for several minutes longer, a glorious backing synth as well as changing its simple bass. The tape hiss transitions this track into the final part of the experience, part six. The almost melancholy feel of this track reflects your experience on leaving this newfound planet without being able to communicate with its inhabitants. Even though it begins with a popping, no pun intended, drums and ocean tide like tapis, the joining yet emotional synth pad and lead can, can bring you to tears or to a point of ultimate relaxation. As for the vinyl itself, it was heavily mass produced and I was able to pick up my copy from a record store near me for $10. It looks and sounds pristine, especially for its age. It has better sound quality than many of my mo modern albums. Kudos to Polydo for signing the jar in an era when many wouldn't and delivering it such a monumental release, which is the test of time. Tell me what you think of this album in the comments below.